Today we've got a great story of revenge against a fake cop. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, keep using my email address and I will mess with you. My Gmail address is short and sweet, easy to remember, no numbers or anything like that, just my first and last names. Problem is that it seems that people with a name similar to mine use it as one of those throwaway addresses you give when you're filling out some stuff for a random company and you don't want to give away your data. This means I get a lot of spam. I get crap from all over the Americas, the US, Mexico, Guatemala, Brazil, Ecuador, my surname sounds Hispanic, and it gets very tiresome. Very. I sometimes get an honest mistake like an email from a school in Texas or something, and I write back telling them that it's not the correct address, and I get a thanks back. I'm not a complete monster, but every now and then these guys overstep the mark. They use this email address, which remember they have no access to, to sign up for stuff you really might not want other people to be able to mess around with. Q Petty Revenge Some random guy in California used a dating site using my email. I use the lost password feature to go onto his account, insult his prospective witches, then delete the account altogether. I got an email from a Brazilian car dealer asking if I wanted a full service package with some extras, to which I said yes, absolutely, order all the necessary parts and material. Strangely, I never heard from them again. My favorite was a rental car reservation some moron used my email for. I got access to a reserved area and added some extra insurance and a couple of extra days to his rental period. I have some schadenfreude when I think of him wanting to leave the car, but having to go through the trouble of having to cancel my add-ons. Screw you. There's a moral here, kids. Don't use random email addresses for stuff. You know, I've had this exact thing happen to me before, and like the emails I've had aren't that like straightforward. Like, I think I've had some people sending, like, their school documents to my email somehow. And they were also all in, like, Spanish. It's incredibly confusing because, like, you can't help the person in that situation. And, like, I'm obviously not going to do anything with their school homework assignment or whatever. Also, hi, I'm Steven. And if you enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is Revenge on Cheating X. As the title explains, this is revenge against a cheating ex. This was back in 2013. Months have already gone by since I broke things off with my ex. She strung me along, used and abused me, while stating she wanted to work things out and she's sorry for her wrongs. But then, thanks to an unlocked phone, found the texts, pictures, and even videos that were time-stamped and showed that she's been cheating on me this entire time. It was graphic and caused a great deal of pain for me for years to come. After fully breaking things off and moving on one day, I see her at a bus stop. Now, it's Florida in the spring and it's Tallahassee where the roads suck and there's a huge puddle of standing water right there by the bus stop. Well, being the hot-headed 21-year-old I was and still angry at all the lies and damage, I hit that puddle going 50 miles per hour in a lifted Jeep on 35-inch tires. The tsunami wave I created and witnessed splashing my ex was almost big enough to cause Angelina Jolie to donate money to the relief cause. The irony, as I later found out, she was on her way to her internship and got reprimanded for her drenched appearance. Not what she had in mind by the term, rode hard and put away wet, it's the small victories that matter. Usually in 99% of those situations where somebody hits that puddle of standing water and splashes someone, you would be the total jerk. But in this case, you kind of understand. Our next story is, aggressively push me to get on the train for the remaining seat? I sure hope you enjoy your book. This was a couple of months ago. I was waiting at the station when the train pulled up. Not a busy platform and not a busy train, but the woman behind me aggressively pushed past me to get on first, even ahead of people getting off the train, and almost knocked me over. Fine, whatever, you want a seat? And she did get a seat, to then pull out a book where she was visibly only a few chapters in. Coincidence is that I finished that exact same book a few weeks before, and there's a massive, massive twist three-fourths of the way into the book. Just as I get off the train, I walk past her and say, the wife is faking it the entire time, and walk off. 
felt pretty good. This is like going around and telling people the part where Harry Potter gets on the spaceship. Like, you don't expect it, you don't want to spoil it for people. I get that she cut in line, but you don't have to ruin everything for them. Nah, they kind of deserved it, I'm not gonna lie. Plus, let the people get off the train first before you start getting on. I bet this person had some level of shame, that's probably why they pushed past the people getting off. This next story is, don't give your creditors your new number? Enjoy them calling you at work. A number of years ago, I got a new cell phone number. Apparently it used to belong to this woman, I'll call her Cassie Smith. I started getting calls all the time from collection agencies looking for Cassie. I would tell them they had the wrong number and block them, but they would keep calling from different numbers. One day I was grocery shopping and the store had one of those walls with all the managers names and pics. Lo and behold, the floral manager was Cassie Smith. I went over to the floral section and asked Cassie if her phone number used to be the number I now had. She admitted that that had been her number. I asked her politely if she could give her creditors her number because I was getting constantly harassed by them. She wasn't happy with me and proceeded to yell at me and then found and harassed me on Facebook. I tried to explain that I was just some innocent person who just happened to get her number and didn't deserve to deal with her mess. I went home and every time one of those creditors called, I proceeded to give them Cassie's work name and phone number. If they continue to harass you, apparently there's some very real recourse you can have. Like apparently you can build up a small claims court if you care enough. Otherwise it might be a true scam call if they don't give up while you call them out on it. Our next story is, I got my bully unaccepted from sixth form. So I have Tourette's, it sucks. I often get bad stuff said to me, especially by this one girl. She's been harassing me for months now. But today, she followed me home screaming the R slur at me. I started recording it and emailed it to her mom, dad, our headmaster, our school's Senko leader, and the head of our sixth form. There's a strict policy at my school that means no ableism, homophobia, racism, or anything of the sort. And since we only have a month and a half left, her acceptance letter has been revoked and it's been placed on her permanent record and she now cannot apply anywhere else she would want to go since the application date is out for most sixth forms within an hour drive of where we live. Joke's on her. I mean on one hand it does suck that the rest of her life is most likely going to be affected by this choice, but by the time you get to sixth form you're old enough to know right or wrong and they were clearly very wrong here. This next story is, she just wanted to keep her private life private. So this happened way back in college. Facebook was brand new and all the rage. My roommate had this girlfriend that lived down the hall. I didn't like her much, but whatever, I was always polite. She was a little sketchy, so when she asked to take their relationship status off Facebook, it was extremely suspicious. It didn't sit well with my roommate either. I offered to take care of it for him. At the time, I had a large number of friends that were girls. I went around and asked them all to do me a solid. Within about three hours, his wall had like 30 messages on it. Oh my god, what happened? We should hang out. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? About time, wanna go get dinner? She was furious and put their relationship back up by that evening. OP later clarified in the comments, their relationship only lasted probably a couple of months past that incident. So either way, it wasn't really meant to be. Our next story is, boss overworked me and I got my revenge. I can now freely post this since I left my old job a few months back. My boss was your typical jerk guy, plus one step further. He used to make me work 13 hour shifts without overtime because I was paying my dues. Mind you, I have a master's degree and I was practically working like an animal. Worst part was his screaming and throwing things at me. I've had keyboards, mice, wires, empty water bottles hurled at me, and upper management said this, construction, is a tough field and I have to have thick skin to survive and be successful. I've cried multiple times in my two years at this job because it was so horrible. For some additional context, my partner volunteers like crazy and receives free tickets to shows and concerts. For the two years I've worked there, my boss has timely asked for two tickets to be arranged for him and his wife. Before I was leaving, my boss told me to arrange similar tickets for an upcoming show. I told him that my partner could get them only for the venue in another city, so he'd have to travel. He was fine with it because it was one of the classical things he loves. 
A few weeks later, I sent him the ticket, but edited the QR code and the ticket number just enough to make it invalid. The ticket also did not have his name on file, had my partner's, so I hoped they wouldn't be able to pull up the right ticket. Plus, I was pretty sure he didn't know my partner's full name to have the tickets pulled up. The weekend of the show, I saw on his IG stories that he flew to the other city. I got a bunch of calls from him that evening, presumably because the tickets were showing up as invalid, but I sat and watched TV and let my phone ring. I just wonder how it went after the situation, because OP was the one that went out there and said, hey, I can get you the tickets, and then got them invalid tickets and then ghosted them. So it's not like OP like expertly did something behind the scenes, they had something to actually answer to. This next story is, bullied me in the 6th grade? I got my revenge 15 years later. I had a bully in middle school who used to torment the life out of me by beating me up, pouring water on me, locking me in bathrooms, making fun of my weight, etc. I recently saw on Facebook that he's engaged, so I stupidly thought of a petty revenge plan. I used an old Instagram account and posed as a pretty woman and DM'd him. 20 minutes later, he messaged me back. We chatted where I pretended to be a woman and he began to flirt. I screenshotted all his sexts in case he might unsend them, including the NSFW pics that he sent. I forwarded those screenshots to his fiance and bada boom, the engagement photos from their Facebook were deleted the next day. Was this too much? I mean, it's always a little weird when you resort to the catfishing thing and like going to the extent of getting some pretty inappropriate photos, but at least telling the partner is probably doing the right thing. I mean, you save them from marrying a cheater, somebody that's that easily seduced that they're going to go and within the, apparently like an hour or two, send all these photos. Our next story is, my son's name helped me get a small dose of petty revenge against a girl who constantly tried to compete with me in high school. So when I was in high school, I was on the speech and debate team. If you're unfamiliar, think drama club meets young democrats slash young republicans. I did the public speaking events that focused on real world political topics and I loved it. I usually made it to the finals in my events, but I had fun even when I didn't and made some really great friends from other schools. If I wasn't in finals, I would go watch others who were competing to support my teammates. There was a girl I saw at almost every tournament. Let's call her M. M and I didn't do any of the same events because she focused more on the drama side of speech and debate, but M constantly was comparing herself to other people and would get really arrogant if she made it to the finals in her events and I didn't make it to the finals in mine. Anytime she didn't make it to finals in her events, she would cry and accuse the judges of not being fair and would then pout in the cafeteria all throughout finals and sometimes wouldn't even go to awards to support her teammates who did win something. In conversations, she was also a big one-upper. You could never talk about anything fun or cool you did because she'd always done something cooler or more fun. If you've ever seen Glee, She was a real-life Rachel Berry. She and I are still friends on social media, although we haven't personally spoken very much since high school. I've watched her flaunt now two different failed engagements, along with a slew of random jobs that never seem to work out for very long. I don't post as much on social media, so she didn't really know what was going on in my life. My long-term partner and I found out in early March that we were pregnant. We had been trying for a baby and didn't think it would ever happen, because we'd been told by doctors that our chances of conceiving naturally were slim. So this baby means everything to us. Before we even got pregnant, we'd agreed on a name for our baby, if we were to have the boy we both wanted. In high school, my grandmother had told me that if she had ever had a son, this was the name she was going to give him. However, she only had two girls. I fell in love with the name immediately, and told her that if I ever have a son, I would give him this name. She passed away while I was in college, but I'm still in love with the name and fully intend to honor that promise I made to my grandmother. Thankfully, my partner also fell in love with this name when I told him about it. Flash forward to the present day, my partner and I were about a week away from finding out if we were having a boy or a girl, and then one day on Instagram, I see a post from M announcing that she's pregnant with a boy. 
she is due two months before me. At this point, I hadn't announced my own pregnancy publicly yet, so M didn't know, but some of our mutual friends knew. One of them who was really close to her informed me that she had shared her baby name list with her and that the name my grandmother picked out was on the list. M had specifically said that she remembered me talking about liking that name at a speech tournament in high school and that the name had stuck with her ever since, particularly because the name is shared by her favorite poet. She told our mutual friend that that name was her top choice, but her partner had a different preference so they were still going back and forth about it. My partner and I recently found out that we're also having a boy, and we're using the name we love regardless of what M names her baby, because what difference is it really going to make? Especially because we don't even live in the same state, and these children will probably never meet. It's also not a unique or rare name by any means, so to us it feels silly to act like only one of us can use it. But this is where I got my small dose of petty revenge. After we learned the gender of the baby, we decided to go ahead and announce our pregnancy publicly, and since we already had his name picked out, and it's something we know we're not going to change our minds about since it has so much sentimental value, we decided to include his name in the announcement. So M learned that I was also pregnant, having a boy, and using the name I loved. I would be lying if I said that I hadn't thought about M's reaction when my partner and I made the decision to also announce our baby's name. M hasn't said anything to me about the baby or about our name choice, but apparently she has a lot to say to our mutual friends. She said if she can talk her partner into it, she still wants to use that name for her son, and that since her baby will be born first, if I do end up using it for my son as well, then I'm just copying her. She has apparently become obsessed with trying to find out details about my pregnancy and my relationship with my partner, since I don't post as much on social media. She's been harassing our mutual friends asking about me, to the point where several of them are starting to cut ties with her because it's getting to be too much. Even her partner has reportedly told her that she's going overboard and has apparently vetoed this name for their son because he thinks she's too weirdly fixated on it and me and wants her to stop stirring the pot so i'm having a baby with the man of my dreams getting to finally use the name my grandmother fell in love with decades ago and as an added bonus my friends from high school are finally seeing how weird m is for the way she constantly tries to compete with different people apparently a million people in the comments just implored op to share the name so op did joe Joe Mama. Our next story is Cheesecake and Vengeance. My great grandmother was the most racist, hateful, and disgusting person I've ever met. She was mean as heck all the time, always had to have the best in everything, and treated us poorly for stupid reasons. This evil woman died because she would not accept a blood transfusion in case it had a black person's blood in it. She was homophobic, greedy, spiteful, and told my mother about me, and I quote, if that girl doesn't get her life together, she's gonna end up dating one of those brown boys. If she gave me any gifts, they were cheap and fell apart, but my brother she would spend like $200 on. With that being said, she had the most bomb mocha cheesecake recipe ever. She swore she was taking it to her grave. The recipe was fan-freaking-tastic, I love it, but she would never share it with us. Recently, my mom found an email that she didn't know about. My grandpa, great-grandmother's son, snuck the recipe to us through email before he died, knowing full well that great-grandma wouldn't give it to us. Now I'm trying to give the recipe to anyone and everyone who wants it, especially the people she was racist and homophobic against. In fact, I've asked my girlfriend to make it for me and will be posting the recipe on TikTok too. My mom posted it on Facebook. I hope that woman rolls in her grave knowing that the only good thing to come from her was cheesecake, and that when she tried to be greedy and refuse it to us even then, that now, all the people she most hated will be enjoying it with immense satisfaction. So OP posted an image of the recipe in the comments, and it turns out it wasn't even her own recipe, it was from some old magazine. It's literally just a picture of an old magazine's frozen mocha cheesecake. Well, I love that she was so like, no, I'll never share the recipe. 
Maybe she was just embarrassed that she got it from a magazine. Our next story is Landlord Revenge Recouped What He Stole From Us. Well over a decade ago, we had a grade A craphead landlord. We lived in a large old Victorian house that was converted into about four to five individual apartments. The landlord had installed the HVAC system himself. He had no idea what he was doing and did it wrong. It was a forced air natural gas system. His incompetence caused the exhaust pipe to melt and burn away, releasing the CO into the building. We called the fire department who shut it off and red tagged the machine. It was cold in mid-January. A half day goes by with no response from the landlord. Things were chilly. Finally, we called an HVAC company to do the repair. At that time, about $650. Landlord calls back about two days later and flips out that we called the fire department and a contractor. He refuses to reimburse us for the repair. He bemoans us he could have handled the issue. People like this aren't worth reasoning with or wasting time escrowing the rent in court. Revenge? There was coin-operated laundry in the basement. It was about $4 to do a load of laundry. My buddy and I got a case of beer and took apart the entire coin-op hardware and rigged up some zip ties out the back of the machines so we could trigger the mechanical switch and do all the free laundry we wanted. All the tenants were updated on the laundry bypass and his actions being an absolute jerk. They were happy to save on free laundry. With five units doing about three to four loads per week, I'm thinking he lost about 60 to $100 a week. That jerk would come to empty the coins and witched that no one was using his laundry machines. Is this a normal situation? Like this landlord having coin operated washing machines? It just kind of sucks and it just tells you enough about the kind of landlord. I mean, I guess if it takes place in a city, maybe it saves on the water costs? This next story is, your two hex bonds just fell? I guess they had it coming. Context, two weeks ago, I was enjoying a restaurant meal with three friends. Everything went well until a mom and her two hex bonds sat on the exterior of the restaurant, leaving her two banshees running and shrieking. I first got up and asked kindly if she could call them because we're kind of trying to enjoy a meal without having her two hex bonds running and shrieking, to which I've been met with a deal with that. Less than five minutes later, both fell face flat on the ground of the street crying. She finally got up and gave me a dirty look thinking I tripped them on purpose, to which I said, deal with it. They had it coming by not looking where they go. I mean, this is honestly just the quintessential part of being a rambunctious kid. You're gonna run around flailing your arms and every once in a while you might fall on your face. It just sucks that the parent's entitled. Our next story is, don't like my car parked in my drive? Let's create art. I had a classic Cadillac that I'd been restoring. I'd already completed all of the interior and exterior bodywork and paint. I had the engine out and was slowly rebuilding it. The car sat in my driveway beside my garage. This is about the time a new neighbor moved in across the street from me. A few days after we moved in, I received a violation to the city ordinance that all vehicles on private property must be fully registered and licensed. When I called the city, wondering why after more than two years they were hassling me, I was told there had been a complaint, so I threw a cover over the car. A week later, I got another violation. The cover wasn't enough. I moved the car to my backyard, parked it between two sheds with the cover, Another violation, and this time there was a fine. I took it to court. I was told that the ordinance was clear. No vehicle could be parked on private property unless it was properly licensed. It was part of the blight laws. It cost me $250. So I got even with the city and my new neighbor. I owned the lot next to my house and generally used it for family gatherings. I now decided that this would make a great place for an art exhibit. I moved the car to the front of that lot, put it on a foundation, and painted it purple, pink, and green. I said it was an art sculpture and let them take me to court. I took a picture of Cadillac Ranch in Texas as one of my exhibits that my car was a piece of art. The judge agreed and that work of art stayed in my yard for the next 8 years until I moved. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I'm impressed that the judge was willing to agree with OP there and let them have that car there. But hey, it turned out to be one satisfying form of revenge. When OP said, oh, they're going to take me to court for this car I painted multiple different colors, I was like, there's no way the judge is going to be, yeah, that's a piece of art right there. 
This next story is, I shoved my mum for leaving me home. I'm a three-year-old border collie. It's my job to go with dad when he takes mum to work. Yesterday, I got left home. Dad had to drop the fat pit bull from next door off at the vets. I like to pinch him and make him cry when dad isn't looking. It was very unfair. How do they get mum to work without me? Dad took me to get mum after she was done with work. I usually stand out the window when mum comes up. I usually wrap my paws around her and kiss her. Not today. I smacked mum on the chest really hard. Then I went and sat with my nose in the corner and gave her a side eye. Boy, did I teach her. I've read a lot of these stories and I really had to take a beat before I understood I'm a three-year-old border collie. Most of these things are like, I'm a 25-year-old working in this industry. No, this is a dog writing this story. This next story is, Neighbor Son Gets Memorial Day Revenge. Neighbor Son, Garth, graduated college about this time last year and got his first full-time career job at a company. He's in the IT department of a branch office and does IT things. Total number of employees at this office is around 20. Some are sales, some work in the office. Karen is the office manager. When Garth first started, there were three IT people. They had an office in the basement away from the rest of the employees. This suited Garth just fine. He's a quiet, introverted young man, highly intelligent, but he's not a social person. Would rather spend his time off gaming than live interaction. As you can imagine, he's not a big kid, maybe a buck fifty after eating a big steak for dinner. The other two IT people eventually move on to other jobs, and corporate doesn't replace them. Now Garth has three times the work without receiving a raise. Garth voices his concerns to Karen about workload and callouts, and he gets the standard feeble corporate responses and condescending lecture. I don't know why he didn't quit then, but he stuck it out hoping to eventually be recognized for his worth, etc. Whenever I spoke with him, he'd say how bad it was working for Karen. But his saving grace was he was in his solitary office most of the day and did not have much contact with her. Until one day back in February, he got a phone call from Karen telling him to come upstairs. Upon arriving, he's directed to start moving furniture around. Garth takes a look around and tells Karen his job does not call for moving heavy objects. Karen gets loud and calls his manhood into question in front of everyone, but Garth does not budge. Life changed for Garth after that. Karen had decided to make work miserable for him. She started repeatedly writing him up for whatever she could think up. Here comes the petty revenge. Garth starts snooping and discovers that Karen is having an affair with a married co-worker. Their work phones are synced up to their computer system, which Garth has access to. Garth has created a mass corporate email with various screenshots of the sexting. He rigged it to be sent out today from her own email account. The beauty of it all, Garth walked in Friday and tendered his resignation to corporate HR. He left his ID card and whatever else on Karen's desk. Karen made a big deal of shouting to Garth as he was leaving to not let the door hit him in the butt on the way out. When the email is sent out, they may well suspect that Garth was the perpetrator, but they'll never be able to prove it. I can only hope Garth's revenge is sweet and spectacular. Now, is this story really the neighbor's son? I mean, all of the details OP knows here. I think they're just trying to cover their butt by having plausible deniability. Not that it would matter, I don't think posting this on r slash petty revenge would lead to anything happening here. But hey, I mean, cover all your bases, right? Our next story is, I made a fake cop on a power trip believe that he had apologized to my mother. This happened a few days ago. My mom was picking me up at the airport curbside. She had just pulled up to the curb and I was hustling to the pickup spot. I had no checked bags to pick up, so I was just looking for the door she told me she'd pulled up to. Still on the phone, I hear her arguing with, who I will refer to as a fake cop, just one of those airport parking people who are on power trips and tell people to go around the block again. Fake cop told my mom that she had two minutes before she had to leave. My mom told fake cop that I was on my way, just trying to find the correct door. I was seconds away. Then my mom sees fake cop writing down her license plate number. Obviously not wanting a ticket from a fake cop on a power trip, she leaves and has to go around the block. We hang up. I arrive to the door she was supposed to be at literally seconds later. Note, I'm not actually on the phone with my mom anymore. 
but I continued to hold the phone to my ear, so to the fake cop, it looked like we never hung up. I run outside, pretending to still be on the phone with my mom, saying things like, I'm here mom, where did you go? Oh, he made you leave? I'm so sorry, that's awful. Fake cop overhears my fake conversation and chimes in with something like, She hit the two minute mark so I made her go around the block. I pretend to half hear, don't give much attention or acknowledgement, but I say on my fake phone call, Oh, okay, the parking enforcement officer said he made you go around the block because he didn't understand the situation. He didn't realize how close I was. He just apologized. He feels really bad. I'll see you soon. I turned around after I hung up to see the fake cop walking away. I made him believe that my mom, the woman he yelled at, thinks he'd apologized to her. He was so embarrassed. I just wish that this guy seemed even more grumpier than just like walking away or like seeming slightly embarrassed. Like I want to see that world where this fake cop was like, no I didn't say that, I didn't apologize, I did the right thing. But maybe their job is worth it a little bit more to them than that. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.